Hello and welcome to this video on bending moment diagrams. In this video we'll talk about the concept of a bending moment diagram and we'll go through a couple of examples on how to uh, actually create such a diagram. So to begin with, suppose we have a, uh, a beam loaded with the following forces and we want to find the bending moment for every possible position on the beam. So one thing we could do is cut the beam in at lots of different places, say maybe a centimeter apart, and every place we cut the beam find the bending moment and that would tell us the bending moment as a function of position, at least as a function of the position where we actually cut the beam. Now this would be a lot of extra work. It turns out that what we can do is something similar in the sense that we will cut the beam at a point and then we'll find the bending moment at that point but we'll do it in such a way that we call the distance from the end of the, the edge of the beam to the point x and so we'll find it for any value of x and that makes it so we do it once and we're done. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so let's begin by looking at uh, a value of x that's between 0 and 2 meters. The reason I choose 2 meters as my upper limit for x is uh, when I get to 2 meters, all of a sudden I have this next force that enters into the picture. And so I want to start by, by choosing a value of x that will only uh, end up having the moment affected by this force. So we'll choose an x that's less than 2 meters. And then we draw the free body diagram. And again, this distance here is x. We have the downward force at the end of the bar of 1050 newtons. And for this, uh, for our purposes here, the only thing we're interested in is the bending moment. Uh, we could also be interested in the shear force moment, but that would then give us a shear force diagram and there's already a video that does that. So in this case we're only interested in the bending moment. So if we look at what we have here, if we take, um, if we sum all of the moments about this point, we will have, well if we sum all of the moments about this point and set them equal to zero, we'll have 1050 newtons times x. x here is the moment arm. This is the force downward. And it's going counterclockwise, so it would be positive. Plus m is equal to 0. m is drawn counterclockwise as well. So m is equal to minus 1050x. So if we graph this, oops, let's give ourselves some room to actually graph it. So as we graph this as a function of x, this is m, we have that it starts off going like this until it gets to 2 meters. Okay, so we're off to a good start. We now have the bending moment for distances between 0 and 2 meters. Well, what happens when I want to look at a value of x that's greater than 2 meters? Well, if x is greater than 2 meters, uh, it's between uh, 2 meters and 4.8 meters, then the free body diagram is going to look like this. Again, I have a force downward of 1050 newtons. Now I have a force upward of 1800 newtons. Again, um, this distance here is x. The distance, the moment arm over which this 1800 newton force will work is x minus 2 meters. Okay, because if this distance from here to here is x, we know that from here to here is 2 meters, so the distance would be x minus 2 meters. Now, 
we again sum the moments about this point because again we're trying to find this M. So again we have the 1050 newtons X and that's positive because it's making a counterclockwise rotation. We have minus 1800 newtons times X minus 2 meters. This is negative because it's making a clockwise rotation plus M is equal to zero. And we can solve this for M. This will be a function of X. M of X will be 750 newtons times X minus 3,600 newton meters. And so if we graph this, we get something that looks like this. It goes from our point down here back up to zero at 4.8 meters. And this guy has a slope of 750 uh, newtons per uh, newtons per meter. Um, the slope here was minus 1050 newtons per meter. Okay, so we have here then a graph of the bending moment. And uh, that was again pretty easy. Uh, it wasn't that difficult to do. It turns out it's really not that hard to do when you have these concentrated forces. Now let's look at a situation where we have a distributed force. So now we have something that looks like this. And again, we want to find the bending moment diagram for uh, this beam that's loaded with a uh, concentrated force here, here, and here, and then a distributed force of 200 newtons per meter along the length of the beam. Okay, so again, the idea is we will make a cut at some point and we'll call that point X. And again, uh, to begin with, we'll have X be between zero and two meters. So we don't have to deal with uh, this force going up here. So between zero and two meters, uh, the moments that we'll have, oh, well, let's first draw our free body diagram. And this has a force of 200 newtons per meter. And um, we're trying to find this moment M. And again, this cut is made at X. So the distance from zero here to this point is X. Okay, so um, let's look at the moments that we have. Uh, the moment due to the uh, 12 142 is going to be positive because uh, it's inducing a, a counterclockwise rotation. So we'll have 1242 newtons times x because x is the length of the moment arm. And then our distributed uh, force will actually also in introduce a moment. And that moment will be uh, the integral from 0 to x, okay, so I'm going to have to integrate from this point out to here of a variable which I'll call x prime, 200 newtons per meter dx prime. Okay, so the idea is if um, I'm going from 0 to x, and I want to find the contribution of this distributed force to this moment M at each of the points here between 0 and X. I'll choose a value X prime, which I have right here. And I know that for a small piece of uh, the beam of width DX, that the force downward will be 200 newtons per meter times DX and that has, I'm sorry, times dx prime. And that will have the moment arm of x prime. So basically this is giving me the moment arm times the force 
of an infinitesimal slice of the beam. And so I just integrate from 0 to x, and that gives me the overall net moment uh, exerted by this distributed force. And then this is going to be equal to m, or I'm sorry, we add m, and then we set it equal to 0. The sum of the moments here is going to be 0. So when I work this integral, I get then, um, let's see, x prime, the, the 200 newtons per meter is a constant, so it's basically 200 newtons per meter, the integral from 0 to x of x prime dx prime. Uh, this guy here just turns out to be x squared over 2 because the upper limit gives, well, when I integrate this I get uh, x prime squared over 2. Then I plug in the upper limit, which is x, which gives me this. The lower limit is 0. It doesn't affect this. So I have then that this whole thing is 100 newtons per meter times x squared. Okay, so when I solve this whole thing for m, I get m, and it will be a function of x, is equal to minus 1,242 newtons times x minus 100 newtons per meter x squared, and that's it. Okay, so that gives me um, the expression for my bending moment as a function of x as long as x is between 0 and 2 meters. Now you'll notice the fact that I've got an x squared term here means that this is going to have a parabolic shape. It's going to be a chunk of a parabola. Okay, so the next thing to do then is um, see what happens when we have the case where x out is out here. So x is greater than 2 meters, but less than 4.8 meters. And in this case, here we'll uh, clear off some of the space here. In this case, I can draw the free body diagram. And I have this force down, this force up, the distributed force going across. And um, let's see, this is 1242 Newtons. 29.52 newtons. Okay, so we can say then that the moment generated by this guy is going to be 12.42 newtons times x, and this will be um, positive because it's inducing a counterclockwise rotation. In fact, I should have drawn that here. This is our moment. Um, minus 2952 newtons, and the moment arm here is going to be 2 meters minus x. Whoops, I'm sorry, got that backwards. x minus 2 meters, okay? So the distance from here to here where this force is applied is x minus 2 meters. And in this exactly the same way that we got the moment due to the distributed force, in this case, again, it will be exactly the same. It will be uh, 100 newtons per meter times x squared. Okay, and we'll have then a plus m, and this is all equal to zero. Uh, when we then um, solve this, we'll get then that m of x is equal to uh, minus 5,904 newton meters plus 1,710 newtons times x minus 100 newtons per meter x squared. Again, this is a graph of a parabola. And if I'm lucky, I will be able to find the graph I made of this. 
it looks something like this. Um, the uh, uh, all of the moments here are negative, and you can see between zero and two meters, I have part of a parabola going down like this. Between two meters and 4.8 meters, it starts to go back up like this. So hopefully you found this useful, and um, this will conclude this video.